and gentlemen, welcome to the Back Ups. What up? I'm Timbo B. Davis, and I coach football, and he's... Connor B. Fickley, and I coach football. And that's convenient because this is a football podcast. Uh, different yes, segment. We're, yeah. we're, we're, we're laser focused on one topic today. One thing. One thing. And so we're going to go through that, and we'll, uh, we're calling it the frozen shock. The frozen shock. And basically, the whole idea is that it's, <laughs> it's like the, ref- the, the freezer. Yeah. You're pulling out something, something tasty to eat that you, you ain't maybe seen in, in a, a while. long time. Didn't know it was in there. Didn't know it was in there. You know, dust off a little freezer burn. And uh, after a little bit of defrost and put it in the oven, it's, it's good as new. It's, it's yummy. Tastes just like it was uh, made yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we're, today we're eating Wildcat. Wildcat. 1997. Uh, 97. So the vintage is good. The vintage is good. Um, <laughs> full disclaimer this is uh, kind of on the heels of uh, last week, Tony Franklin put out a his podcast on this specific game of Al- uh, Kentucky, Alabama, yep. 1997. It's the first time like in a billion years that Kentucky beat Alabama. Um, Probably will be for all, another yeah, billion, it'll, but it'll we'll be, see. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I, an interesting, uh, yeah, the Bama, Bama looks good. Yeah, they're doing good. Bama, Bama will be good for a while. Um, but one of the cool things is we are going to dissect old playbooks. Yep. That's what's in the that's what's in the freezer. This is our first one. We're gonna we're, we we might be breaking out an old 49ers playbook at some point. You never know. Which is like the size of Dune. I don't know if you see this. The, did you get the playbook? I sent you the PDF. Yeah, it was too big. It was too big to load. It's too big to open. Yeah. It's like it, 400 pages. It's, it's a legit. lot of verbiage. It's a lot legit 400 of pages. Yeah, no, it's yeah, nuts. Crazy. 350 pages, I believe, to be exact. You know, those of you out there <laughs> oh holding gosh. on to the uh, yeah, 49ers playbook. You. But no, uh, the the whole idea of what we're going to do here is we're going to break this down. We also have the ability, um, because the year is 2020 to go. Boom. Wait, it's not 2020. What is it? 2021. 2021. Almost 2022. 20th century. We're getting we have the there. ability to do a little bit of virtual reality. So while these playbooks might be a, a little frozen for us as we thaw them out, we're going to dive into the head. Of the quarterback, we have our you know Coach Feckley here is our is is our quarterback coach, and um, he will give us perspective on what these guys are seeing as they go through the reads. More on that later. Yep. But what we want to do is we want to dive right into it. And you know what? We're not trying to be experts on this. This is not. Uh, we're we're not Hal Mummy. We're not Mike no. Leach or Tony or, or Dana Holgerson we or Chris there. Hatcher. We weren't there. Uh, we admire it. We've watched Great group it. Group of dudes. Studied Great group it. Of guys. Yeah. Yeah. We studied it and we're learning about it. <laughs> um, uh, read a lot about it, you know, done the history lessons on it, but the focus is we just want to take a, a little bit of time to dive into the playbook and with these frozen shock sessions, analyze what can help us as high school coaches um, install this or youth coaches in general. And so what, what concepts can we pick out um, from these uh, little morsels from the past yeah. in, the, in the freezer? In the freezer. So let's go and we're diving right in right now. We got the... Um, and we're going to have the original playbooks or, or, or not necessarily original, but whatever we can find online because yeah. online is a great PDF copy of PDF, of it. lots of PDF. So we're diving <laughs> in right now with uh, stick right more or less, you know, that blue right 618 Y option. I like stick, stick right. better. I like stick better. Stick, you know, it <laughs> rolls off the tongue a little it, bit better than does. Uh, all that. It's like when Cam was on the Gruden show and he had to repeat the long play call. And, and he's like, I just call that. Go. Yeah, we call we this. We just call this sick. Stick. So, <laughs> uh, walking through blue right six eighteen y option. One of the cool things in this game was uh, Kentucky's ability to get the ball to the running backs. They had a couple of really good running backs. One was a more of a receiver type. One was a, a heavier, more physical runner. And actually, he was a pretty good receiver too. Um, but we're looking at six eighteen y option right here. Uh, what are your thoughts going through uh, things about stick that we can? I mean, it's a common play. Every, many common offenses play. Yeah. use it now. Uh, talk to us about stick a little bit. I mean, as quarterback here, being a, a split back under center here, you're just, you know getting your three step drop, and the first thing is, as soon as you're hitting that third step, you're just trying to get ball out to your rhythm here. And and if the flats is wide open here, uh, they got a little bit of the condensed split, bringing that wide receiver in motion to kind of tighten things up and open up more space out there in the flat. And like as you can see there, as soon as that guy opens up space, the running back gets out wide to grass quarterback puts it on him right away and you know i think one of the interesting things about diving into this playbook is we think about wide open air raid offenses and being real, spread out being spread out and yeah. here we are in 20, 20 personnel, personnel. Yeah. under center with motion bringing a guy into the box it's actually this will be our first play that we take to the uh the vr machine if you will Ooh. so let's go ahead and go into the mind of tim couch right now um first of all we're looking for the deep route outside if you got your number one outside man on man coverage, if it's, you know, you got it over the top, you're taking him. Same thing. Three step ball out, 
but if as you see there dbs are getting getting depth you're not gonna you know they're, they're taking away your deep shot flats are wide open that now becomes your rhythm route one two three ball out so and that's a big thing i think you see a lot of offenses that they'll convert these if you get the press corner you the whoops the mor will get converted to a, a go route um i know that tony likes to teach throw the stick till he can't throw the stick and so clearly right here the stick is taken away don't throw the stick yeah, yeah. and the and because of that you have the f out in the flats so i mean you can take it you can flip it from the other side of the ball here and we can actually become alabama's defense if we're alabama's defensive coordinator and we're looking at this we're thinking our outside linebacker here is going to have to run with the running back in the flats um, and this is 1997, so defenses are a little different. And these linebackers are, you know, hey, this is a, this is a 21 personnel. A lot more, with, a lot more uh, running the football. A lot, lot more, more guys that are built to uh, stop the football, like I said, protect the edge, not necessarily uh, covering, you know, wide receiver like running backs in space. Boom, wide receiver like running backs. I think that's something that you can learn a lot about this playbook is that as we talk about these running backs getting out there in space, it's changed the game of football. Oh yeah. These these uh, as Tony will call them and as we'll call them whole defenders, outside yep. linebackers. These guys have changed. In 1997 they had to be run defenders. Why? Because look at we're in 21 personnel with a crack style motion coming from the Z. If we're running the ball outside, number run, yeah. absolutely. This is a great time, you know, you can see to run your toss. little crack motion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have toss. You have uh, some type of get the ball out. You got a out. lead out there. You got your your F going up to your man. It, yeah, you got numbers. You have a chance. So these guys were run defenders, and now all of a sudden, you know, in '97, Kentucky's flipping that and saying, "Hey, we're going to make these guys, uh, we're, we're going to make these guys cover. We have an athletic advantage with our running backs over those linebackers. That's changed the game." Which brings us to today. Yeah. And today, it's kind of one of those things where we're talking about how can we use 618, uh, Blue Riot 618 uh, as a great play. And I'm seeing it as with the use of that condensed formation, yep. similar to the Shanahan stuff, um, you can take whole players who are now more nickelbacks. More guys that are They're used DBs. to playing in space. Yeah, yeah. They'd, they'd rather be in space where they can get a guy one-on-one -on -one rather yeah. than being in the box and getting hit by a big lineman. And, or cracked by the Z. Or cracked by a Z. And then once you have now, you're, now, now that guy's the force player on the run. He's the, the force agent. He's a smaller dude. So I think f football goes in waves and cycles and, and looking at what can we learn. For me, the, my biggest takeaway from watching Kentucky run this in 97 was that whole players have changed. Yeah. And and are you a high school and, and is the whole player you're going against? Is that outside linebacker? Is he a type of a guy who's going to be a run nightmare? Then can your running back just run past them? Can you? Yeah. Can you beat him in space? Yeah. And if it's the opposite, if he's a smaller guy who's better at covering in space, can you get a guy in to block him and, and beat him in the run game? And so cool. Just revisiting stick. A play that's play that's uh, well known, run, running a lot of offenses. Um, but let's go ahead and dive to our next look. And so, you know, I, I think another play that's run a lot, in fact, uh, just today, if you were watching it, Michigan beat Penn State, and they actually beat Penn State on hitting the the, the mesher out of mesh. Out of mesh. Um, on the front side, took it up the sideline, big touchdown from Michigan. Uh, congrats to them winning today. But um, Coach Ricky, I know you're happy. Coach Ricky's happy <laughs> about that. Yep. But, you know, what's wild about this is, is looking at mesh, you know, we – you don't, it's not five wide. It's not spread. You're not in 10. Yeah. You're in 20 personnel. You're in 20 personnel, under center, potentially running mesh. Um, I think, and mesh has changed over the years. I think mesh oh, yeah. is, and, and all these all these concepts we're talking about, you know, we know that they're running more than the 97 Kentucky Ye playbook. Yes. But these were things that we saw in their playbook that are still run. One of the big things that we're seeing um, today is a lot of wheel routes and a lot of some type of, uh, middle, you know, emotion and middle open or middle zone killer. So mesh, you don't necessarily have to teach settle down in the zone all the time. You can train the meshers to always run it like Keep man those guys coverage. moving. Yeah, get those linebackers cleared out. And like you said, create that zone in the middle to just hit your guy wide open for a nice easy, nice easy completion there. Absolutely. And going back with the same philosophy with linebackers being in trouble versus running backs, um, as you can see here, uh, getting the ball out to the to the running back. 
if and for us, we would rhythm this running back. That running yeah. back's gonna be our first read, um, you know, like a like a flood style play. And you can definitely read deep here first. Yep. Similar so, to how it kind of looked on that last play on stick. Yeah. I mean, that's that's what we're looking for. It's a, that's that it's a throw in the grass, taking what the defense is gonna give you. Yep. And so we actually it was tough to tell because we did not have the all 22 um of this, but we are looking at what I watched the the coach mummy and Tim Couch video on on YouTube where they sit down and they analyze each play and, and coach mummy calls, he says this was mesh for us, you know, for us, this wouldn't be good enough to be honest. Cause these meshes, they should be clapping hands for they should us. Be, it's a little closer, at least yeah, a little yeah. bit more of a mesh. So, and maybe yeah. this is shallow. Some this was game shallow four, cross game that, four, right? In the first yes, year, this is game four for Kentucky in the first year. So this is early on in their time at Kentucky. And so but, you, never, you never know. Benefit you never, of the yeah, doubt. Benefit yeah. of the doubt. Completion nonetheless. But look what we got. We got a running back. Who's really a receiver. Versus a linebacker who is is kind of stuck in a weird spot. And actually, they run this as a man coverage. Uh, they're, they're in man of some sort. And you so see stuck the, that he just blitzed. He, yeah. was, he was too worried about it. So And so, yeah, you lose the guy that's covering your Who's running your back. your responsibility, yeah. And it is a big play. We can see it from the end zone. I also, one of the big things that, uh, that has been talked about by about the air raid is the air raid isn't necessarily just about the plays it's about how you practice doing it a million times so you have repetition 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 understanding the receivers and the quarterback have got to be on the same page especially if you're going to add things like you said where you're going to be possibly simmering down you know those guys instead of clearing out on non-stop zones so the receivers and quarterbacks got to be on the same page you got to understand how it um and how it changes against different defenses as well yeah. so like i said you can never get enough reps so and, and one of the things i love too is an emphasis on receiver blocking and so really when you run this, and if if the running back is your first read, which for us it, it can be, it certainly we want to take the deep shot, but the deep shot's capped here, yeah. So they don't take it pre snap. Yeah, if it's not there, those, those wide receivers should know that if your DB sitting at ten yards, you're running your route for ten, and then you're basically blocking right away. Absolutely, and and now you're in a position where you basically have a lead blocker who's the mesher, and so in a weird way, you know, we're looking at some mesh cutups here. But in really out in reality, the the a weird way, the way they're running mesh is just another way to get the ball to the, the, the running back in a flood type out scenario. In, yeah, like a kick return, a okay, punt return, yeah. Absolutely. Get him out in space and create that one-on-one -on -one mismatch, like you said, with the, with the linebacker who is not used to covering guys. 43 ain't getting to 32, and, and I think if you gotta, you have to know the linebackers you're going against. You gotta, yep, gotta have the right matchup. But let's go ahead, and because it is 2021, I got that right, we do have a, a VR cut up of mesh. So let's do take it, take it to the VR. VR. So, uh, and for those of you listening, that's just going to be weird, but that's going to be okay. You'll you can go we'll watch this. Out. Watch this on YouTube. Uh, <laughs> you'll catch it there. But as we can see here, uh, this is the quarterback saw the uh, we have some type of pressure coming from the tight end side again. Twenty one personnel twins. It's nothing special. The boundary about that. load it up could be a run. Yeah, yep. absolutely. And now you have a potential in the man coverage. Um, if the linebacker, you catch them in a blitz and if you catch them in a blitz and they don't have good blitz peel rules, you are in a great position for a big play to your running back in space. So that's why I like mesh. I know it kind of takes a black eye in certain coaching circles. Absolutely. And, and, and I know it's an expensive play at times, but for us, the big takeaway that I've found with mesh to make it less expensive is that you, you get something over the middle. And, and, and the area guys morphed into this, and now it's totally. a pro-style play. Yep. You have mesh with, with a dude running over the middle. Um, the Packers run that a ton. Oh, yeah, and um, they're good at it. But you said you're, you're getting that mismatch. You're getting opportunities where you're, you're making easy throws, too. Your, your rhythm should be, you said it should be like a quick fade if it's there, or it should be out, you know, dumped to the flat, or stepping up, you know, in the pocket and hitting your, your curl in the middle there. And it should yeah. all be, you know, if you're running it right and consistently and against, you know, the right kind of defense, you should be hitting the guys pretty open, so... But it can also be uh, a pain in the butt if you don't practice it enough. You, you got to timing you down. And, and yep. so uh, there, is that, there is that element of it as well. No, the, the practice has to be there. And I think that that's one of the big things is, is as we look at this playbook, this playbook's not going to be super complex as to, to you know, it's not going to blow your mind. No. But what it, it's all about the details and, you know, how the receivers run their routes and how the running backs run their routes and what the quarterback's looking for in each one. So mesh, yeah, nothing time, absolutely. nothing wild and new with mesh, but it is one that was uh, used, and, and again, used mostly here we see in this game to use running backs on linebackers. And if that's a theme that we're picking yeah. up on in uh Seeing mesh had 20 personnel. See, Don't see it a lot, but there it is. There it is. And Especially I think under center. I guess that makes it more so feel absolutely. And I, a lot more different. I, I think, yeah. 
Well, you know, near and dear to my heart. I love the screen game. Oh, yeah. Big fan of the screen game. Um, this is kind of the, you know, the area it's morphed. And there's a billion forms of screen. There's fast screen. Tons of ways, yeah. There's the uh, you have your your back slow screens, but the 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 air raid style and these guys you know really focused on like the tunnel screen variations. We call it jail or missile, or, or you've heard a lot of these things. This would be missile yeah. for us just because you have the ninety setting, ninety set from the tackles yeah. uh, on the tackles, and then you have the guard center guard releasing, um, and they called it Lisa and Rita. You know we 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 have different names for it obviously, but but we're just gonna let this screen. Uh, footage go and we'll talk about it the big thing is the screen doesn't always work and it doesn't have to always work to work true and so i think that as the screen game goes you're getting linemen out in space you're getting linebackers who in this game we know are really just line men guys having to run around a lot more just like you said just getting the defense out in different spaces because they're not used to having to you know run her out there and then all of a sudden look up and be blocked by an offensive lineman way out of position so it's a good yeah. way of just mixing up a defense getting guys moving around like I said, all you need is a, to break one tackle to make a big play, you know? If, and if you're not a great draw team, I think the screen game becomes yes. important. They did run draw quite a bit in this game uh, and zone. That that was uh, that was run quite a bit. But as, as we're letting these clips roll, I mean, some of these some of these screens hit and some of them don't. But I, I think the emphasis was that, hey, they kept coming back to it. They kept rolling back with the screen. And I, and I think that there's just something about the the clock of the game on the body of a defensive player that when you, you, you respond to screen enough, it slows you down. And all of a sudden, your base stuff oh, yeah. just opens up that much more. And, and like you were saying, you might throw it. You know, you got to stay consistent with it. And you got to stay with it because that screen may not work. It may not work. But, man, as soon as it hits, it's a game changer. Yeah. You know? And it's completely def you know deflating for a defense to, you know, to get beat on a three yard pass that turns into an 80 yard touchdown when you've been stopping it all day. Yeah. So definitely uh, it's hard for an offensive coordinator to move sometimes and, and for fans to sit there and watch, you know, a, a typical uh, screenplay and watch it not work and not work and not work. But man, as soon as it does, it's uh, one of the most, usually one of the most exciting plays of a football game. So, and when, and you have those excitement moments um, and, and what we're going to see here is that they're, they're going to run screen throughout this ball game. Oh yeah. And it's going to, again, if you're going against a bigger, slower team, this is a great thing to do, um, a great way to uh, to get your skill players out in space. Obviously, you know, our coaching tenure at, at West, we've run a lot of screen game, and it goes back to this. And so I, I think my big takeaway from this is just screen doesn't have to work to work. And no. I, I mean, we kind of know that, but sometimes you got to see that. And, and, and if you're throwing the ball out there, like you said, if you're giving the ball out there to your best player, I mean, how many times, you know, is there ever too many times you can give him an opportunity yeah. to, like I said, if the guys are blocking, you know, and if he can just mi make one miss, he can go, you know, make a big play for you. So absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. That was the screen game. Uh, so one mm -hmm. of the most air raidy of air raid plays uh, that is now ubiquitous in the NFL. Everybody uses some form of cross. Air raidy. Is 95. Um, everybody loves a good old 95 Y cross. Y cross. Um, and we see this a lot of times with play action now. Um, we see this with, with bootlegs and, and, and all sorts of different ways to set up uh, Y cross. Almost every offense runs it. It's not like the air raid necessarily invented it. In fact, the air raid really is a collection of plays from other offenses as well, yeah. going back to BYU. Um, they took, uh, they really took the shallow cross series of, you know, the post dig sh shallow look. They got that from like the Shanahan crew, the original Shanahan. The original one. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so a lot of these things, but nothing is more air rating in my book than 95. And, and it, we can't not talk 97 Kentucky without talking about <laughs> 95 white cross. 95 white um, cross. So here's 95 cross from a quarterback's perspective. <laughs> Uh, and, you know, we're, the way that Tony teaches this now and the way that I like to teach it is we are looking left, middle, right. And real quick on 95, there was no flip of this necessarily. They, they would do some later on. But in this season, almost 90 percent of the plays, the Y was on the right. Like, I think they lined up like two plays the entire 97 season with the Y not on the right coach i can only play on the right side and and you know what it's they uh so leech and and uh mummy and, and that whole crew came up with the fact that they could teach it better again go in that detail mindset yeah you gotta be yeah because if you can't teach it you, how do you expect them to run it right and get what you want out of it absolutely and if you can focus on the details on one side you can be that good so we i don't think many teams are that extreme where you run uh it, that even air raid teams to this yeah. day they'll go cross both ways um, but there's something to be said 
about the dedication and love of detail. And that's what I love. That's, that's why like we do what we do. And is, like you said, if they're able to just have that one route to going in the one direction and, and to keep it that way, it must have been able to, you know, they are able to keep having success on it. So they're able to make it work. And like you said, it just goes back to having the details and those guys making the adjustments based on the defense and continually to have success with that play. So the reason I want to dive into 95 wide cross for this game, uh, first of all, I want to show a bad play that ends up bad for Kentucky and a good one that went well for Kentucky. But the front side, if we're reading wide cross left, middle, right, um, it, it can take a while for the Y to get all the way across. And he's trying to get on the other side of our whole player over here. And the, you know, coach mummy, you know, in, in him talking about actually this exact play, yeah. he talks about, you can't throw over a linebacker here. You, you have to throw, throw lateral past them. Yeah. Or left and right of them. Yeah. So we're looking right now. We we're looking for the, the ball out here on this side of the linebacker. We can't throw over that linebacker because if you do, this might occur. Um, and the, it's not the greatest clip, but you get the idea. Here comes the Y cross and it's intercepted. The, the film cuts right as he's getting it picked off. Here's your linebacker down low. He's sitting, he's flat. So right now the quarterback should be looking into the grass on the other side of him. If he just leads him instead of putting it where he's at, if he puts it where he's going to be, yep. this could be a big play. And so, Dad, it's a pick. <laughs> Boom. And I, I apologize for the, the cut of video, but you guys can see kind of what we're looking at here, uh, where we do have the pick from the linebacker. And had he thrown, had he followed the... Like I said, just attention to detail. Attention to like detail. Like I said, throw it to, yeah, like I said, throw it, throw it left or right to the linebackers, not over them. And like I said, even running this route, I bet you Alabama saw it on film, yeah. you know, a hundred times. And and obviously that backer's sitting in a spot to, t to kind of play, you know, this route, it seems as if, because he is in the perfect spot. But with that said, they still could have gotten beat if the quarterback just would have put it in the right spot. And flipping it again, because I do like to flip it, talk a little bit of defense. One thing, you know, we actually had an interception similar to us in our playoff game. Uh, this season, same same kind of type of thing, and linebackers are getting really, really good, uh, and they're being taught really well to as if you feel the cross are coming, uh, you turn around and you find the cross. The linebacker in this case didn't find the cross; he got lucky. He found ball, the ball. He found the ball. <laughs> his eyes on the quarterback the whole time, and the ball just comes right to him. Uh, but linebackers are now getting pretty good at finding the crosser coming and, and looking for that, that zone anywhere from 12 to 15 yards deep uh, to their play side. And so good job for the, the linebacker there. But what I really love about Y cross and still love uh, to this day is really the backside. The backside. Yeah. Tell me what you like about the backside as a quarterback here. The backside here is just that, that constant flow of everything going, you know, one direction. And then you go back to your backside there. You're going to have in most cases, you know, and like, like you're gonna, like you had said, you know, for years now, the sooner the better you can get to your backside. More often than not, you can hit a back or even a backside curl that's gonna be just, you know, left more so with with space because all your all the commotion and all the defense is gonna be flowing the other direction. And so here's if you're looking at 95, Coach Beckley as a quarterback's talking about that flow. You see the quarterbacks reading front side. You have the flow going. You're gonna get linebackers cleared out, which means that on the back side of this, and when and, and common this, I think in this play they're running post. Yep. And running back check down. We'll actually run a lot. You'll see a lot of dig. Maybe it was even a uh, uh, post I actually noticed it might have been a post dig in this shot here. Yeah. Um, because you see the receiver down here at the bottom. He probably came got there by doing that number. Either way, clearing out space in the flat. Clearing and out if, space in the flat. And if they would have and if backers would have flown out and covered the flat, well then the dig would have been wide open on the backside. So, so you're really giving yourself a really great opportunity here to get a mismatch. So what are we yeah, I was, I was about to ask you what the word of the day is, and it's probably mismatch, right? Because that's what we're looking for. Is in, in this case we have um, and that actually that would be the F. Uh, we have the F in the flats. He's check releasing. Okay. He's able to get out. And so a lot of five man protection in this, you, we will show actually a couple six man protects, but you have the five man protect and you could potentially be max protect. Oh yeah. Um, but again, the idea is not to sit back and protect. The idea is to get the ball out quick, ball out quick. Two guys who can do something with the ball. And when you have two running backs that can do something with the ball as receivers, um, it makes it it makes it a very deadly look, especially if you're going against a slower offense. So let's take it to the big play of the game for uh, Kentucky when they are running 95. Um, quarterback again, can't get to your backside soon enough. There it is. And by the way, hats off. Shout out to the, the ball boy. Check it out here. Top of the screen. Go, Ooh, baby. Look at the hustle. Look at the hustle. He's he, he that guy beats a helmet. Beats My him goodness. down to the yeah. end zone. Holy cow. 
Um, he was faster than the Alabama <laughs> linebackers were in this clip. Ooh. That's for sure. So, the, but again, you see Tim Couch working the front side, um, gets back to it. And he talked about on the interception, he actually said, you know, it's one of those things that it took him a, a minute to, to get the feel for the offense. He loved it. They were running the option the year before this. Yeah. Um, and he loves the fact that, you know, he, he they're he, throwing the football. Yeah. <laughs> and so for him to be able to get to his backside quickly, um, He's got open space, just dumped down a little five-yard pass that becomes one of the biggest plays of the game. Uh, so again, 95, uh, just like Mesh, his name Mesh, and really I wanted to highlight anything but the Mesh in this video. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 95, which is about the cross, we're highlighting again, anything but the cross. So I, again, backs out of the backfield is my big takeaway. I just really think that like, if you're using them against bigger linebackers, it's just Man, I know we're going to sound like a broken record, but that's what I'm picking up. From yeah, this it's video. a great mismatch. And I think it's a great point of emphasis to where if you want to get a guy in space, you don't need to be spread out and, you know, and empty or something like that. You can be in 20 personnel yeah. and still be able to find ways to either with condensed splits or motions or just the way you, you know, the way you're running your routes to get guys open in flats. Um, but just like I said, working with quarterbacks on getting the ball out, you know, ball out quick and efficiently. Like I said, if you don't have a great quarterback who can't push the ball downfield, then here's a great way to get, you know, give the ball to somebody, you know, on an easy, nice pass and, and get some, like I said, get the ball to your playmaker. One of the things that I really like about the playbook in this year and this, this particular makeup of the air raid is the, um, the fact that it's not necessarily a sniffer, you know, it's not yeah. necessarily the fullback that's, that's up close to the line. Um, and you can still do a lot of things with those split backs. We don't do, we haven't done a lot of that. And so for me, it was, I, know I this, never even thought about it like yeah, that. Yeah. I said, you don't put it, put it in my brain like that until you get a chance to kind of sit down and dissect an old playbook and get a chance to see stuff like this. Right. And so that under center split backs. And, and I think they got, you know, a lot of that again from BYU, from Bill, Bill Walsh. Yeah. And we started, I started looking at the, the Niners playbook and saw a lot of things where they're using the backs. The difference here is sim simple and detailed. Simple and detailed with the backs out of the backfield um, and how they run and how they catch the ball. We're getting down to a couple more plays here. Um, we got uh, one play that's just, it's wild. So it's it's there, it's naked. Um, and, and, and most teams in the NFL run some form of naked. You know, obviously I'm a Jets fan. Uh, and so I'm a big fan of the Shanahan stuff and can get <laughs> splits. Um, and here's naked. They, they actually talk about out of blue right here, how they can call other tags like smash, and we're actually going to take a look at blue right smash coming up. So like we were saying here with cover zero here, quarterback sees it's cover zero pre-snap. We got a, we got smash concept up top outside wide receiver and corner are low. You got the one on one matchup inside. So you got no you got no protection off the edge. Quarterback knows pre-snap. He's throwing the ball like a fade to his corner. And that's exactly what he does. Takes a snap, gets around, does the play action and then avoids the getting hit off the free rush there and throws it right up to his wide open receiver. I, dude, this is a badass throw. I mean, this is pure conviction of a of a quarterback uh, knowing exactly where he's going to go with the ball. Pre-snap. Pre-snap. Like he knew. He, like said, he's, he's fading away. He probably has his hands up because he knows exactly what's going to happen here. I mean, Absolutely. He, but look at the Derek Jeter jump throw. You got to love it. Free rusher off the edge. Doesn't panic. Doesn't freak out. He has details. If you have, If you're locked into the details of the playbook, and you feel good about it and you know exactly what has to happen. He knows that he's got cover zero. He's going to have that chance to the corner. He just has to beat the D end off the edge, off the play. Action. Like I said, and it's great. And the quarterback should know that right away as well. But so should the receiver. The receiver should yes. be able to look out there and say, hey, I got, you know, the receiver outside of me. He's got low press corner there. I got I got space. This is just this should just be a straight fade rate right to me. And like I said, he can adjust his route accordingly because he should know exactly where the ball is going to be. And. And that ball is going to be out quick and coming to him. But obviously, Couch does a great job here. If the receiver ends up scoring a touchdown here, if he's just concerned about you know running his corner route, the you know the way he's given you know the matchup against his defender, he may not be anticipating this ball you know as fast yeah. as it's coming like that. Because usually the quarterback is getting around, contain and throwing the ball. You know, but pre-snap he's aware of where he's at in the field, down in distance, cover zero. You know what was going on outside of him. Corner's not there to make a play because he was up press on the guy outside of him. Good stuff on Naked. You never thought I'd say that on a podcast. Um, 
93. This is actually going to be the play of really the game. It's going to score them a few big plays, but it's going to win the game in overtime versus Alabama team. Um, famously so. And, and 93 is something that we don't really run. I mean, we run curl wheel. Everybody runs some type curl, of version curl of curl yeah. wheel. Um, but when we're looking at 93, I love the front side post. I know we haven't really taught it like this. Um, and it's, it, it just, it, it it's a, you know, again, it's one of those left-handed plays, you know, you're, you have your H wheel. And so we're, we're going to run this a million times and the X is going to know how to run his curl. He might adjust his curl. And again, it doesn't matter if it's four games into the season. Um, you've run this all spring, all fall. Yeah. And you're you know, running, you know what you're doing, you know what you're doing. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think the details coming back and I think it, it, for us, like I said, for years, it's just that comfortability factor of, we know what we're going to have backside, you know, and when you're running a post and, you never know if it's going to be there or not. And if it is, then they said that's where we want the ball to be because yep. we have a wide open shot at the post. But if it ain't there, you know, no sense in forcing something, come back to what we know is going to have, you know, what we feel comfortable with, what we have a shot at. And so here we're going to actually see the curl hit here on the yep. backside. And and the quarterback's reading one to two to three, uh, the post to the wheel to the curl. And we're going to see the curl is going to be the big play. And you know what? They, they watching this film, it didn't look like they put a lot of, uh, effort into really rhythming the front side of of 93 not they much were, at all they no. were they were looking to the curl almost the whole way kind of coming back to like I said they knew it was going to be open so yeah. they were just coming back to you know what they were going to what they what they were confident what they were going to get it's kind of in the same <laughs> way that instead of having because they don't have cross right you know it's a one it's a it's a right-handed offense in that sense yep they don't have cross right so if you don't have cross or right then it's, you're never going to have the USOM to the backside read on this. And so 93 is a phenomenal uh, addition into the playbook uh, for them in, in, in this sense. And obviously these things that Eric To get that know. same type of concept, but yeah. just having it be without having to run into the flip version of your other play. So absolutely. And it, again, high school coaches, how much time do we have to teach? So they're teaching one-sided. I don't know if you know, we necessarily ever will go to that point where we're teaching like one sided football yeah. like this. But I think that there's but if something we, did, we know how we're going to do it. Well, yeah. And there's <laughs> there's something to be said about knowing what to do one way. Yeah. And being really good at that. Let's actually break down the final few plays of this game and and put the put the, the playbook back in the freezer, the, yeah, back in the freezer, back in the freezer. So here we go. We're, we're really working uh to find and again you have a running back who's now in a great position to block for a receiver so Coming blocking blocker. downfield yeah and that's it's that's a pretty good look of a play and here is the overtime winner for them um and and craig east the the receiver uh supposedly in the in the huddle passionately give called me the ball. For, give me the ball <laughs> give me the ball to the point where we actually get kind of a max protect look uh by the o-line we have Alabama's the bringing three Alabama's bringing three. <laughs> Alabama brings three. We have a Y that stays in the block. Kentucky's the, blocking six because they're throwing the ball to three. Yeah, there you go. And 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 what and what a great. I mean, this ball is, game. Boom. And I think there's something to be said. Conviction and details. Um, Those is, guys knew the concept. They knew what they were going to get, and they knew how to beat it. You yeah. Know, like I said, and that can like say when it comes down to it's as simple as that. It might just be one concept, but there's a lot of ways that you can just adjust to based you know on what you're given. And uh, when you have conviction and, you know, like I said, trust and understanding of it completely, man, boom. You know what happens if you have conviction details? You tear the goalpost down. It goes down. It goes down. The goalposts. And you beat Alabama and you just won air raid offense out of 20 personnel. There you go. And so <laughs> I think that's, you know, if we're if we're going to dive into this or if we had to, if I had to like sum it all up with like a, uh, one uh, sentence description of what we got out of this. Uh, I would say conviction and details is number one. What's your number one takeaway? Conviction and details are right there with it. And I think the number two thing is just uh, how simple you can make uh, big play opportunities. You can get you, you can get opportunities to make big things happen by just creating space uh, just on offense and you know making easy plays for your offense to have uh, success and out of different formations and different personnel sets. Yeah. I mean, air raid's a, a way of mindset. It's a, it's a mindset more than a playbook. They've all changed, yep. but these, these, the DNA of all these is still in playbooks from the NFL. It's everywhere now. So it's not even really unique. It's everybody knows these and they coach it better than what we broke down. But I think looking at it, breaking it out of the freezer, you know, you get that little taste that reminds yeah, you of 1997 little. and, 
And to me, it's un, <laughs> it's taste. under it's under <laughs> it's under center. Split backs is kind of the thing that maybe the sands it, of time. It was a taste to, I forgot about. Yeah, you know, I hadn't hadn't tasted that in a while. Yeah, we got to bring back those those under center split backs. I think there's something there's something to I I don't know if we'll, we'll do that or not this year, but I will definitely tell you watching uh, taking it out of the freezer. Yeah, uh, the freezer. that was that was the aroma. That's yeah. uh that was baked. Um, like I said, it was cool, man. Like I said, it was it was fun to, to look at an air raid offense and a, and a, and a plays like mesh and and things that we do, you know, and on our offense here and out of you know ten personnel or what other things, but to see how effective it can be and and how similar and easy it can be out of twenty personnel and exactly whatever your whatever your offense has got. Well, I think the coolest thing to me too in breaking down each play, the play that stuck out to me the most was stick. Be, and bizarre right everybody runs stick in the nfl and the college and high school like most offenses have some for even if you don't run stick you run like a hot pass some or sort something of version of stick, yeah yes. and so but to see an offense say all right here's a big lumbering linebacker that can't hang with our running backs at this space. time yeah at this time certainly very yeah. cool very cool because you're gonna see that in high school so hey what should you do that's an opportunity for you to get the ball out to your back in the flats um, and outrun the outrun and, the big guys, and like how you had shown in there in that in that mesh clip, and and if that guy's a better cover guy in flat, well then bring your motion guys, and there's your Z crack, and yeah. now you're out in the edge running the football. And out of split backs, you have a lot more options than you would necessarily. Um, totally. In like a sniffer look, it, certainly you can do all sorts of things out of pistol, and he, uh, yeah. out of you know you can run stretch out that, there. you can do a bunch of yeah. stuff. Um, but split backs bring a, an under center split backs bring bring a little bit of nasty yeah, feel that's that to old it. school feel like so that's why it feels weird to say like you're talking about mesh and air raid when you're in that under center split yeah. back more of it like you you're thinking run you're, yeah, that's what I think in my mind yeah so. I want to you know we're gonna break down the Niners we're gonna hopefully get to some clips where like the the on the line receiver uh, the X or whoever that is for their offense at the time that guy will put his hand in the dirt Oh yeah, a three point stance. I think that's that's something that 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 reminded me of. I yes. see that under center stuff, those split backs, and I'm thinking like, oh man, just old school, get after you. And there's something, there's some wisdom to be learned in that. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like I said, and watching like the Rams offense and uh, you know teams like that nowadays, and how their condensed looks, and you know they, you can't be a wide receiver in that offense if you can't no. block. You know, you're getting involved right. in the run game and, and they're counting on you to be that guy to make that big block, you yeah. know, to, to break, to have that run bust wide open. So yeah. uh, definitely cool stuff there. Awesome. Well, hey, uh, super fun. Yeah. We're excited to start doing this with a bunch of playbooks. If you have a playbook that you'd like us to take a look at and a game specifically you want us to take a look at, we'll uh, send it our way. We'll, put it in the comments. We'll get in. The, we'll get, take, take it out of the freezer. Take, take a deep of, dive we, in it. And, we, have uh, a deep, we have a deep freezer. Take a let's, deep let's, freezer, Let's man. start. The internet's an amazing freezer. Let's start thawing this out. Put it in the microwave. Let us know what you got. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I'm Tim Booby Davis, and I coach football. And I'm Connor B. Feckley, and I coach football. And if you get knocked down, get back up. Get out the freezer. <laughs>